Hey guys, this is CLS01, and today I'm going to show you how to make your old countertops look like new again, without having to spend a bunch of money on materials and labor. So the countertops I'm working on today are about 30 years old, and they're in very rough shape, a lot of chips and scratches, and they look really bad. And to just replace the countertops will cost quite a bit of money, especially with a custom countertop like this one. So to get these looking like new again, I'm actually going to paint them, but I'm not going to use any regular paint, I'm going to use an epoxy paint. And this epoxy paint is actually a garage floor paint, so it's very durable. So this is a garage floor paint made by Rust-Oleum, and it only comes in two colors, gray and tan. If you're looking to get more colors, a lot of your big paint stores like Diamond Vogel and Sherman Williams usually have epoxy paint, but it's going to be more expensive there. This particular Rust-Oleum garage floor paint can be found at your local hardware stores, such as Sutherland's, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, etc. And it costs right around $60. This epoxy garage floor paint is designed to hold up to the traffic of cars. It's much more durable, scratch resistant, and chip proof than regular household paint. I actually have a countertop that I painted about 10 years ago, and it's holding up great still. So inside the box, you're going to have a couple different things. There's going to be texture chips, and that's more for garage floors to help it to where it's not so slippery. Uh, it probably wouldn't look so good on a countertop. Then it's going to have concrete etching material, and that's designed for concrete also, so you don't want to use that at all. Then it's going to have your two-part epoxy. It's either going to be in two cans or a pouch like this. And these pouches actually make it much easier for mixing. So to prep your countertop, you're going to have to sand the entire surface with sandpaper. I'm going to be using 360 grit sandpaper. Once you scuff the entire surface with the sandpaper, it's time to go ahead and clean it thoroughly. You want to make sure you use a cleaner that doesn't affect the adhesion of the paint. I'm just going to use a household Windex because it's good for adhesion and it evaporates fast. So if you have the epoxy that includes a pouch, it's very easy to mix. All you have to do is squeeze the end of it here and start rolling it up until the seal between the two parts mix together. Once that seal breaks, you'll want to start shaking the bag and mixing it for at least a full minute. If your epoxy kit contains two paint cans instead of a pouch, you're just going to have to mix the two parts together and follow the instructions. So I'm cutting just the corner off this bag so I can pour a controlled amount into my paint tray. When you're done pouring, make sure to set the bag somewhere safe so if it spills, you don't have disaster. So to paint with, you want to make sure to use a foam roller. If you try to use a regular roller, you're going to end up with a bunch of material from your roller cover mixed in your paint because of the epoxy paint being so adhesive and sticky. And for the edges, I'm going to be using a good quality paintbrush. So to start with, we're just going to do a nice even coat on the entire surface. So if you do too thick a coat, you're just going to end up with a bunch of drips. So just take your time. You're going to have to do a second coat, or maybe even a third coat. So here's a look at after the first coat. We got pretty good coverage, but you can see it still definitely needs another coat. So we're going to let this dry about 20 to 30 minutes, and then hit it with a second coat. So I'm on my second coat now, and I think two coats is going to be enough. You want to make sure to keep in mind that the shelf life on the paint after mixing the two parts together is only about four hours. So even if you seal the bag off, the paint's going to continue to cure. So you're going to have to use that paint up or it's going to get wasted. So I'm all done now. Here's a look at what the countertop looked like before. It looked pretty bad. It was in rough shape. And here's the after. It's nice and shiny again and looks like new. So this is a good cheap way to get some more life out of your countertops. If I was just to replace the countertops, I probably would have had to spend at least $500. So this is a much cheaper way to go. And also, you want to make sure to let your counters cure for at least a day before stacking or put anything on top of them. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is CLS All in One. If you want to hear more from me, please like and subscribe. And to see more of my videos, just click any of these categories to see more.